Bridal here and welcome to Friday's Question and Answers and Odds and Ends. Today we're starting with a little floor show in my den. Here's some produce that Prepare harvested last night. The garden's going just great now. Here's some cherry tomatoes, enough to last us for a couple of days. They're a little bigger than the standard cherry tomatoes and I really love them. Uh, we've got a few that have a little splits on them from uh, getting too much rain initially, but uh, not too many and they're great. We've got uh, jalapenos and the long purple Japanese eggplant, which is just our favorite. They're coming on great. And then here is a bowl of cucumbers and bell peppers. And you should see those bell pepper plants, how small they are, but they're producing these gorgeous, huge bell peppers. So the produce is doing great. We don't have uh, any big tomatoes yet, and we don't have uh, any uh, green beans yet, but, but uh, what's coming in looks great. Now. Adventures with Dad asked a question. He asked uh, if I would show my global sun oven setup. And so I have uh, Preparay coming in to do that. She's bringing it in. It's not very heavy. She's a little old wisp of a girl, and she has no trouble uh, manhandling this thing. She uh, is usually the one who sets it up for me. Okay, here you go. You undo the little latch that keeps the reflectors down. It's a nice, firm latch. And then she's going to quickly set up the reflectors. All you do is just open them up. Uh, how's that, Adventures with Dad, for the setup? Pretty quick, huh? Uh, it's, just, it's just that easy. The reflectors just open up and sit right on the little wooden edge. There's two levers over there that you open the glass door with. You just turn them. There you go. Open it up. There's a little rubber handle that you hold so that you don't burn yourself. There's a cantilever tray in the middle of the sun oven. Can you just uh, move it just a little bit, preparation so they can see how that works? There you go. You don't really have to have that in there. You can take it out if you've got a big pot that needs to go in there. But it's in case you're cooking something like a stew or a soup that, uh, that is very liquid. You want that cantilever tray so that no matter how you use that telescoping leg in the back or no matter what direct angle you use, that that tray is going to self-adjust and keep that soup level. And that's really all there is to it. There's a thermometer uh, in there. You can cook two uh, small cookie sheets of cookies in there. Uh, you can, well, actually, you can cook three or four, in fact. And all you do is put one this way, and then the next one you put on top this way, and then you can put another one this way and just stack them up. And you can do multi-level cooking in there. If I wanted to boil a half dozen eggs, all I would do is just take them out and set them on that tray right there and put them in the sun. There's no need for water or anything. They just cook right there on the tray because the heating is, is so even. Okay, let's go ahead and shut the door. And the last thing we'll just show you there, <clears throat> let's go ahead and just close, close the reflectors down. Folds up just as easily as it sets up. And if you'll just turn it around, Preparay, and, and show us that leg in the back that allows you to tilt it at a better angle, depending on the year, how uh, you just want to have it at a good angle to where it's facing directly to the sun. You just press the little button and pull the leg down however you want. Let's just stop it anywhere. It doesn't matter. There you go. And the only other thing you really need to know is that when you're looking at the sun oven, and the sun is shining directly, it will be shining towards you here because it's shining on the reflectors. You want to look and see that you have on this side, like right here and right over here, you want the shadow to be the same width. And it's so easy just to look, if you stand directly behind it and look at the shadow on either side, if the shadow is even, then that thing is pointed directly toward the sun. Uh, if, it's, if it's getting to be afternoon, the, show, the sun's going lower in the horizon, all you would do is bring this telescoping leg down a little further and tilt it toward the sun. It's that easy. Love the sun oven. Now I'm going to show you a little project I was working on this weekend. Let me get a paper that flew away. I'll just show you one. Uh, I have wanted to make something called a wonder box. And I'll tell you what that is in just a minute. It, 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 you make it out of fabric, you sew it. And I went online to look at uh, some patterns for Wonder Boxes, and they were very small, so I sketched out the pattern by hand, uh, giving the dimensions of how big the fabric needed to be cut, 
And then you'll see over here, it even lists angles. There's a 130 degree angle. That one's 135. That one's 90 degrees. Uh, so I drew out, this is, happens to be the pattern for the bottom of the Wonder Box. And then I went and drew out the top. And it was quite a, a challenge. I haven't had geometry in several years. And uh, I got out my protractor and um, ruler and began, began drawing it out. I had some old packing paper that came in a box I ordered, so I used it to make the full-size pattern. Here's the, here's the uh, top of the Wonder Box, and here is, this, I'll show you this so you can see, it's kind of crazy looking, and here is the, the bottom pattern. It's pointed and it comes down. It's perfectly symmetrical. So that's my pattern, okay? And here's what I ended up with. Here is my Wonder Box. And this is a uh, tool that they're using um, to help women cook with less fuel in third world countries. It's used in Africa a lot. They're teaching women how to use it because what the premise is that you can heat whatever food you're going to make. If you're going to make a chili or a, a stew or a roast or anything, is that you heat it on, on uh, your fire for 20 minutes and then you quickly take it to the Wonder Box, and the Wonder Box, here's the lid, and here's the center of the Wonder Box. I'm going to pull the fabric up so you can see. There was the funny, the funny point, and then the, the base is basically square. And then you put this down here. These are filled with styrofoam beads. I'll have Preparate get those bag of styrofoam beads so you can see what, what I filled it with. I special ordered those beads over a year ago, um, and they came in. I've been waiting to make it until until I had time. So that's what you do. Here are the beads I stuffed it with. These little styrofoam beads, very much like the ones that go in uh, beanbag chairs. Uh, it took a huge box of them to fill both of these. So what you do is you, you nestle your pot, your hot pot right in here, and then you put the lid on your Wonder Pot. It's also filled with styrofoam beads. And you let it cook just like a slow cooker, but using no energy for uh, four or five hours. And we cooked it at this weekend. I made a couple of mistakes. One is I used my little round pot that came with my sun oven, which is actually a thin walled enamel pot. And that is not what you should be using in this. You should be using a very thick walled pot that's going to hold the heat. So I can't wait to try it again. The beans came, came out okay. And after six hours, when I took this lid off and opened up the pot, the beans were still hot. They just had not quite cooked all the way through. But that was my that was my mistake. There's still you know there's a learning curve on this obviously, but I'm going to get it all figured out. But that is my wonder box. It's like cooking in a thermos really. You just put your hot pot in there, and this will adjust to pretty much any size pot you want. You just push it out if you need it to be for a bigger pot, and just set it right down in there and put your lid on and you're good to go. I'll give you more updates on this as I work with it and see how it goes. Now let's go over to the computer so I can get to my papers for the rest of your questions and answers. I have got, oh, probably four or five comments on people who have who watched the pot roast video and commented. I thought I'd share a couple of with those with you. Uh, Andy Girl said, I followed your recipe and made this for my family last night and everyone loved it. My husband couldn't, uh, couldn't wait to come home and finish off the leftovers today. It really was legendary. Thanks for sharing. And uh, La Laysa Ibon F. says, I made this last night for the family. I have to say this was the best roast I have ever had. I tossed out my old recipe and replaced it with yours. It was a hit with the entire family. Hubby and son fought over the leftovers for lunch because there wasn't enough left for them both to take to work. It was a huge roast and they ate like pigs. Uh, she loved it. Another one uh, said uh, she did it with a, a pork butt roast and it brought it to a whole nother level. It was fantastic. Thanks for the tips. They were very helpful. She said, I highly recommend this to everyone. My promise to you is that I am never going to post a mediocre recipe. If I post it, I think it's the best of this kind of its kind that I've ever had. 
Uh, I did that with the granola recipe and with the pork roast recipe, both the best of those two kinds of food that, uh, that I've ever had. I got an interesting question from Echoes of an Angel. She said um, that, first of all, when she started prepping, she dehydrated everything she could get her hands on, and she found that to be such a waste because her family wouldn't eat all of it. And she talked about the picky fan, uh, eaters in her family. There's four guys in her house and a teenage daughter. And she said they like spicy food and they eat too much. She has allergies and her daughter is picky. She said the guys don't like vegetables and she has to sneak in ground up carrots and uh, celery and all other kind of stuff into sloppy joes and spaghetti mixes. She said they love pizza and tacos, but she can't dehydrate that. Um, do I have any other suggestions or, or how can I help her family to know what to do for her family for balanced meals? Well, my first question is why can't you store foods to make pizza and tacos? It's so easy to pressure can ground meat. Uh, I really recommend, they only cost about $12, maybe $15 online that you get a tortilla press and store popcorn. If you store popcorn, you can grind that up. Um, I, I store dent corn uh, to grind up for corn because I have a deal with a farmer. I teach his daughter piano lessons and a couple of times a year he trades me piano lessons for a couple of 50-pound uh, bags of corn. Uh, but I recommend that you get a tortilla maker. You can make uh, both corn tortillas and flour tortillas with that thing and it'd be easy for you to make tacos. Um, I, think you can, I think you should plan to eat that meal if that's what your family loves and store what you need to make it. Um, the next thing I would like to say is that um, it seems like your guys aren't vegetable eaters. Maybe, maybe they would eat fruit. Uh, I'm not a big fruit eater, but I love a smoothie. Love it. And I don't make mine with milk. I start mine, I put two bananas in my blender and then I throw in frozen strawberries and blueberries till the container is full and then I just fill in the gaps with the orange juice and blend it up and I can get all my fruit vegetable groups for one day in a glass. Now, not, I don't usually do that because I love vegetables too, but it's a good way for me to get fruit. And you might try that. The other thing I might recommend is oven fries. You can use both white and sweet potatoes to make oven fries. You just salt and pepper them and toss them in olive oil and spread them on a foil lined cookie sheet. Uh, that's a great way. And sweet potatoes especially have lots of fiber and lots of good vitamins. The other thing I suggest is probably making zucchini bread and pumpkin bread. That's a good way to get vegetables into their diet. Uh, the other thing I would do if I were you is store lots of multivitamins. If they're not getting it from their food, maybe you can give it to them in vitamin form. But I think my best advice would be quit worrying about what you can't control. Other than your daughter and I think maybe one son who are, you know, just on the verge of adulthood, uh, there's nothing, you, you can't get them to eat what they w don't want to eat. And they're just going to have to take responsibility for themselves and realize that if they want good nutrition, it's up to them. Use your energies, uh, Echoes of an Angel, in a more productive way. As I reviewed a video I wanted to share with you today, I heard a quote that's not new to me, but hearing it again reminded me of what good counsel it is. And the counsel is, don't look for others to change. Start changing yourself. And the change that you can make is quit worrying about things that you can't control, and it sure will make it easier to live with your non-vegetable eaters. One of my subscribers is the Garden Tech. <laughs> Pardon me, somebody must be at the front door. The Garden Tech, and the Garden Tech has a new YouTube channel that you should really check out. And he left this quote this week for me. It says, worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do but it gets you nowhere. And that's true. Quit worrying about what you can't change. Go check out the Garden Tech's uh, YouTube channel. I'll leave a link below. Uh, and I, I have a little bit of advice for Garden Tech. And the best advice I can give is to make a video entitled Doomsday. I'm not kidding you. I made a, a video entitled Doomsday and it got almost a thousand views in one week. I couldn't believe it. But it sure lets you know what people are thinking about and how concerned they are about the times we live in. Ziva for Freedom says, thanks for the info. Uh, if I buy another canner ring, can I water bath two levels at a time 
or is that something you would recommend? Sure, you can water, level, uh, water bath two levels at a time. That's not a problem. But you're probably going to have to have a pretty deep pot because you're going to have to have two inches of boiling water above the, uh, the highest jar. So if you've got a really huge pot and you're doing pints, you probably can do that. Um, I haven't ever done it because, well, I don't know why. But I just, uh, I just have it, but you certainly could. Uh, somebody asked about gardening in a very small space, and I can't find the comment or the email, so I don't know who asked that. But if you watching my videos, you know that I am gardening in an incredibly small space. I'm doing a lot of vertical gardening. I'm doing a lot of horizontal gardening that's above ground level. So I'm spreading out in every direction. But the best advice I can give you is to check out uh, Jules Dervais and see what he's doing over in California. He lives in a major city, only a hundred yards from a major highway. He lives on less than a tenth of an acre, a standard, pretty standard city lot, and he has turned it into uh, a Garden of Eden. I am not kidding you. He produces lots of food and has lots of good advice. Uh, the name of his the name of the movie that I want to recommend, and we'll post a link to. It's a, I think it's a 15-minute movie called Homegrown Revolution, The Urban Homestead. It was produced in 2009. His YouTube channel is Urban Homestead. I'll post all the links for you. He's an old hippie. He, he says his garden became his Alamo. It's where he decided to take his stand. Uh, he says that gardening is the most dangerous occupation because you run the risk of becoming free. And I totally agree with that. And he was really my inspiration when I decided to go ahead and make this tiny, tiny little lot that I have work for me. And I watched his videos over and over and how he laid out his garden and what he did and his techniques. But it's just fascinating. And if you haven't uh, seen Jules Dervais, please go check out Urban Homestead. It's awesome. Uh, this is just kind of an odds and ends. A lot of people are sending me free, friend invitations. It's not that I don't want to be your friend. I do, but I'm... I'm um, I'm clicking the ignore button mostly because I don't friend anybody who doesn't also make videos. Um, the other thing is I'm only friending those people who really are doing similar kinds of things that I'm doing because I know that my subscribers look at who I'm subscribing to and I don't want them just to go to any channel where somebody's not putting on, up videos, that they're just watching videos but they hadn't they're sitting on the sidelines and hadn't really jumped into the game. So I'm probably going to unfriend some people. It's not that you're not my friend anymore. It's just that I want to be very selective because my subscribers are, are checking out those people. I don't subscribe to a lot of gun and knife review kind of channels. Not that I don't think those are important. It's just not exactly where my interests lie at the moment. And my husband is the one who's responsible for that area of prepping. Uh, not that I'm not interested. Not that I don't like to shoot because I do, but uh, that's just not what I'm about right now. Um, in fact, my husband was very surprised when an In American Game Files uh, chat this past week, uh, they were talking about guns, and, and uh, American Game Files said, you know, the question was, what kind of guns should you have, and how many guns should you, should you have? And my husband was sitting beside me as we were, as we were listening to that chat, and I rattled off, well, you need a good handgun, a shotgun, and then either an AR-15 or AK-47. And, and my husband looked at me, and he was just stunned, and he high-fived me. And uh, I was so proud. So I, I am listening to you guys, okay? Uh, I'm trying to get it all figured out. Another interesting observation on my channel. I am, at every single person who subscribes, I go to their channel and look to see who they are. I look to see what part of the country they're from, if they've identified that, what kind of videos they're watching, what kind of videos they're favoriting, and their age if they've listed it. And I am fascinated by the number of people who subscribe to my channel who are between the ages of 50 and 60. And I would have to say that most of my subscribers probably fall between the ages of 45 and 60. Uh, and I just think it's great. That, uh, that these people are, are, are saying, you know, it's not too late and we're going we're gonna, to, you know, get into this and we're going to start prepping and we're going to get with it. 
but lots of people right around my age, 42, 43, 44, just lots of them, and I just think that's awesome. Okay, Anuk03 says, how do you know when the actual item is ready that you've put on a dehydrator? She says she's just started dehydrating, her celery doesn't look pretty and green like mine, and she doesn't know when to take things off the dehydrator. She thinks she's leaving them on too long. Let me refer you to a couple places. Uh, dehydrate to store, I'll post a link, is kind of like the queen of dehydrating on YouTube. She's an awesome research, resource. There's a couple of other. There is, and I'll post the link to the, Excalibur has a great chart for fruit. I don't know why they don't have one for vegetables. Uh, and then, this is a site called farmgal.tripod.com, and she has a vegetable drying guide a fruit drying guide. She talks about fruit leathers, jerky, and then she's got lots of recipes below. So I'll give you the links to both of those. A lot of it's trial and error based on your own dehydrator, uh, but the charts will give you a good idea about where you should be on that. Uh, Book Golem uh, left a recipe for some zucchini where she mixes sausage and hamburger with Prego spaghetti sauce. Uh, she browns her hamburger in um, and sausage first and mix it with spaghetti sauce and then folds in her cooked zucchini and she puts that in a dish and then covers it with cheese and bakes it. Doesn't that sound good? Just an idea for something for you to try uh, baking uh, with your zucchini. Um, one of the things she says was there was a recipe going around in uh, the 70s where you took pineapple juice and canned your zucchini with that pineapple juice and it taste, ended up making your zucchini taste like pineapple, but that you can't find that recipe anymore and that a lot of people have said it's unsafe and what was my opinion about that? Well, let me tell you a little bit about who makes the rules for home canning. And in large part, it's the National Center for Home and Food Preservation. Now, who are those folks? Well, they're bedfellows with the USDA, and they've long been recognized as the credible source for science-based recommendations when it comes to food preservation. Uh, they have not kept up with, in my opinion, their job as well as they should. Their, their work and research has been sporadic since the 50s, and that's, uh, in general, due to the availability or lack of availability of resources and probably of interested persons who are, will, who are willing to preserve, uh, pursue that field. Um, but anyway, they decide what's safe and what's not safe, and that's kind of the rules. Uh, now, here's, here's what really bugs me, and here's what they say about squash and zucchini. Recommendations for canning summer squashes, including the zucchini that appeared in former editions of uh, their bulletins and USDA bulletins, have been withdrawn due to uncertainty about the determination of processing times. Squash your low acid vegetables and require pressure canning for a known period of time that will destroy the bacteria that cause botulism. Document now listen to this. Is this government at its finest? Documentation for the previous process times cannot be found. And reports that are available do not support the old process. Slices or cubes of cooked summer squash will get quite soft and packed tightly into jars. The amount of squash filled into a jar will affect the heating patterns in the jar. It is best to freeze summer squashes or pickle them for canning, and they may also be dried. Now, how ridiculous is that, okay? I have no problem canning squash, and I have that recipe for you, that mock pineapple recipe. I will list it below for you. Um, they're talking about it packing down and being dense. Well, I'm sorry. There's nothing more dense than the stew meat I pack or nothing more dense than chunks of pumpkin that are packed. Now, they don't recommend you packing, uh, canning pureed pumpkin, but it's perfectly safe to pack chunk pumpkin. So why is it not safe to pack, uh, to, to can squash? I think if you just heat it up and put it in the can and lightly uh, put it in the jars, processing them for 25 minutes for pints and 35 minutes for quarts at 10 pounds of pressure, you have no problem. Will I be canning squash this year? You bet you. And maybe we can hope for the USDA to find their lost records, or maybe somebody could get in the kitchen and maybe just like uh, do a little test and then publish the research for us and let us know what they think the time and uh, pressures are. But guys, I'm not holding my breath on that one. 
go look at Old Timers' websites. Here's one of my favorites. This is called PaulKnoll.com. This is a an elderly gentleman and his wife who are, here's a picture of when they were younger over here. Uh, they're world tra travelers. They've owned their own businesses. They're educators. They're, they've taught English as a second language in China. Uh, these are brilliant people. Uh, in fact, one of my favorite pictures, oh, here's a section I love. They have all sorts of things, but they have cooking recipes. She has great recipes here. And then canning at home. This is the one I'm going to click on right here, canning at home. I'm going to click on that. And it shows you a picture of Paul sitting at the stove. Go figure. What's he doing? This is why you should listen to the old timers. He says, I hope you can see him right there. He says, I sit in my chair and keep an eye on the gauges and times between canners going and coming. Look at that. He pulls up a chair right to the stove to watch his, his canning gauges. Uh, we talked about this last week, and I told you it was advisable to watch those. But go and look, and they will give you step-by-step -step instructions for canning anything like, let's see, uh, let's see, canning soups. You just press on canning soups, and you pick the one you wanted. I was looking at their beef and barley soup. I press on beef and barley. There, barley, there she is with all of the ingredients, and the ingredients are listed over here. And then you go down here, and you click here for the 16 steps of canning that soup and they list them in 16 steps. Here's eight of them here and then you click page two to go to the rest of them and they give you a complete narrative. Awesome site. Check it out. There is somebody on YouTube who is selling survival stuff and he has a commercial, that's what I'm going to call it, a commercial to sell bag of cheese and and I'm afraid that some of my subscribers have watched that video where he says that it's not safe to buy canned goods off the store shelf for your home storage, that you really should buy stuff from somebody like him because the cans are different and they're made for preserving food for a long time. Please don't fall for that. I've sent him a rather heated uh, email saying that I uh, think that's not good what he's doing. Uh, and that's putting it nicely. Please don't fall for that. It's perfectly fine to buy cans off a store shelf to put in your store, uh, food storage. I want to tell you about Aldi. Aldi is running a, if you're buying Aldi, they're running a Crofton food dehydrator, five tray dehydrator for $19.99 this week starting Friday. If you need a dehydrator and you're on a tight budget, check it out. $19.99 and you can have one. Uh, I love using my dehydrator. I've just been sitting here. Uh, this afternoon while I'm making this video and I'm munching on uh, strawberry yogurt. That's little pieces of strawberry yogurt. And this is pina colada yogurt with pineapple and coconut that I just put in little puddles on my jelly roll trays and have dehydrated yogurt. It's delicious. I'll tell you more about that if you want more information. Okay. My friend Sabago Steve is offering a tremendous gift to any of his viewers. And it is tickets to attend the Pathfinder School. Tickets are only required for an adult, and each adult can bring one, uh, one youngster or teenager. He is willing to give those tickets away to anybody who will make a video saying why they want them. You also have to subscribe to his channel, but please go check that out. Uh, he is um, he's an amazing individual and has one of the biggest hearts I know of. And he wants to give these tickets. He has a conflict of interest. He was drawn, I think, in the moose hunt thing in his in his uh, in his state. So he's going to get to go on a on a moose hunt, and that conflicts with the time for the Pathfinder School. But he's got tickets to give away. Let's see. I think the only other question I have to ask is Ladybug B O O O three says, "How are you going to be able to do videos when school starts back up? I imagine you'll have to cut back some." Well, you know, I probably will have to cut back a little bit. Uh, school does keep me pretty busy, but I won't quit making videos, and I won't quit answering your questions. And even though videos may get a little sparse for a while, especially at the very first of school, uh, which starts in less than a month, I can't believe it, I'm still going to be around, and I'm still going to be making videos, and you can bet you I'm still going to be prepping. Uh, you, don't, you don't even have to worry about that. Um, Anyway, keep the questions and answers coming. I hope you're finding this Friday question and answer session useful. 
I love your questions, and uh, I, I just adore getting to know you. Some of you are just some fine people, and, and I'm tickled to correspond with you and watch your videos, and uh, just consider it all good. I hope you have a great weekend, that you're able to get out into your gardens without having heat stroke. Oh, my goodness, it's supposed to be 110 here today with the heat index, but I hope to get out there myself a little bit and uh, that you just have a great weekend. Everybody take care, and I'll be back here next Friday with more questions and answers and odds and ends. Take care now. Cat's Cradle.